morning everybody. We're in Winnipeg for our last delivery of this trip before we go home. So let's get going, let's not waste any time. that we're done just got to clean up all this mess in here all this wood sweep this off I'm ready to go home I need to get the inside of this trailer washed thanks oh this is always a fun intersection here I've got to go all the way to the left to turn right and if anybody is turning down here at this time, it's going to really confuse them. And they might get mad at me. stick my nose into traffic, but I need to get far enough out that I can see. There we go. Now I'll wait for traffic to get caught up at the red light there. Right after this white SUV will be able to go as long as no one else is turning here. There we go. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Nah, it wasn't that bad. I was hoping for some more excitement to show you guys everybody was behaving. Sometimes I'll have cars come up from behind me on my right to turn right, even though I have my signal on. Oh, well. 
See, it's not always bad. Sometimes trucking goes exactly as planned. Emphasis on the sometimes. So our trip and all of our delivery duties are officially done for this rounder. So we started here around the Winnipeg area at our yard. We went south, we delivered first in Vinton, Virginia, and then we went up to Woburn, Massachusetts, and then over to Beverly, Massachusetts. Those are both right around the Boston area. And then we went up to Biddeford, Maine, just south of Portland. And from there, we went empty over to Ontario in Canada to Burlington, picked up this load there, and it was two and a half days to get here. So nice little loop, and now it's time to go home for a bit. The worst part, getting all my stuff out of the truck and into the pickup truck. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff, especially when you're gone for that long. I'm gonna get all my stuff out of there, wash it, clean it, clean the truck out. I gotta come back here sometime during the week and do a little detail on it on the inside. But, eh, it's in here. I'm just excited to get home. And this is our new fancy tabletop dishwasher that we use for our baby dishes. We ordered one, it was a different brand. This one is an uh, Armsman. Is that how you pronounce it? Armsman? The other one was a Farberware. And the Farberware one came and the entire front panel here was completely scratched up on the outside, on the inside, and between the panes of glass, or plexiglass, or whatever they make this out of scratched all over it so obviously we sent it back and uh we went with a different brand actually because they were all sold out of the farber wares this is a an exactly the same exactly the same thing this has a baby dishes setting on it so uh, it brings up the water temperature to 160 to 170 degrees i believe or is it 150 to 160. it brings it up to the point where uh, the water will sterilize the baby dishes we also use baby detergent in there instead of regular dishwashing detergent. I know, I know. 
We're a little bit bougie. I know, we're, we're a little bit fancy. We waited a long time for little Theo to get here, and yeah, maybe we're a little over the top. But you know what? That's okay. I don't care. So we got the regular dishwasher down here, and then we got the baby dishwasher right there. So the regular dishwasher handles all of our dishes. There's regular detergent that goes in there, and uh, we usually do a cycle you know, one every once a day or once every second day or so. This baby dishwasher gets used a lot. We didn't want to run a whole cycle through this big dishwasher all the time. But this one, it's on a drying cycle right now. It actually works really good. It has, a, like I was saying, a special baby setting on it to wash baby dishes, specifically to wash baby dishes. The reason we got this, the main reason, is because Britt has a uh, pretty severe eczema on her hands, and uh, the town water that we have, doesn't matter where you go, if it's treated water, the chemicals that they use in the treatment process attack her skin on her hands. And yes, that does make showering and bathing a little more difficult. That's the first question most people ask. It does make it more difficult for her. Uh, so she tries to keep her hands out of the water as much as possible. I mean, I mean they're not going to fall off. She's not here to tell you about it. So, I mean, we'll have to wait for an opportunity when she can tell the story herself uh, about it. But what happens is uh, if she does dishes nonstop at all day, like the baby dishes, our dishes, like while I'm on the road and I'm not here to help or anything, uh... She does the majority of the dishes anyway, even when I'm at home. Um, she uh, uh, always makes sure that our house is clean. I, I always really appreciate that. She's really good. Really good at that. Her anxiety gets up if there's anything dirty in the house. So these are all clean, just so you know. They're stacked up there. We just have a really tiny house. Everything's clean all the time. But what, she, what happens is if she gets her hands in the dishwater a lot, that along with the harsh soaps or anything like that, uh, her hands actually get so dry that they crack open and bleed. And it's very painful for her. It's something that she's dealt with her entire life. She's gone through many different prescriptions and many different uh, uh, creams. Right now she's using the Bull Snot Curable, actually. And it's, it's actually been helping her hands a little bit. It's not completely curing them, but it is helping a lot. And the fact that we have dishwashers now for all of our dishes. Regular dishes, baby dishes, everything. Except for apparently pots and pans. Why can't pots and pans go in the dishwasher? <laughs> I almost like, I always fought back against her because I was, I was, I don't want to put them in the dishwasher, right? Pots and pans, put them in the dishwasher. Everyone who knows anything about pots and pans is telling me no right now. She would always tell me no, and I'd always be like, why no? Why wouldn't, why can't we? So I actually Googled it, and she's right. Of course she is. <laughs> she's right. You can't put, like, uh, pots and pans in the dishwasher because it'll wreck them. Well, why, why do they make pots and pans that aren't dishwasher safe? This is 2023. What's going on here, people? Let's make pots and pans that can go in the dishwasher. So I, we still have to wash the dish, some of the dishes by hand. So it's so confusing. Why can't everything just go in the dishwasher, right? Can't we make things that just work properly? <laughs> Don't get wrecked by dishwashers? But uh, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, the Bull Snot Curable she's been using. I think I have some over here in our bathroom. One sec. This stuff, it's from our friends at Bullsnot. Curable. You can get it on their site, bullsnot.com or uh, bullsnotcanada.com. Either one. And, uh, no joke. This is one of the only products that has actually helped. So things are, are getting better. Her hands can begin healing. Uh, her whole life she's dealt with this. I feel so bad for her. Um, I don't know what they're putting in the water. But I've never had this problem, like my skin doesn't react to the town water. But I can tell you, after I've seen what, like, treated water does to my wife's hands, I stopped drinking that stuff. <laughs> what are they putting in there? Steinbeck water is actually better than Winnipeg water. Winnipeg water is way worse. Way worse. She, she's in constant pain. Her hands are cracking open and bleeding all the time when she uses Winnipeg water. But for some reason, Steinbeck water, their treatment plant here must have a different chemical cocktail or something, the different way they treat their water, and it's not as bad, but it's bad. The best thing for her hands is well water, like outside of town. So uh, maybe when we buy a new house one day, uh, whenever we get out of here, maybe we'll be able to uh, find a place that has its own well, and we can have fresh water out of a well that's not gone through the whole treatment process, because whatever they're, they're putting in there, it, it's kind of <laughs> opened my eyes to it a little bit. I'd like to know, well, what are they doing to the water? Right? Anyways, uh, I'm home now, and Britt is in the city getting her hair done, and I'm here. Theo is napping. I got the monitor right over here. 
working on some videos. He's right there. He's sleeping. Whoops. just down the hallway right in there. so this is actually my first day I'm filming this last part of the vlog on a different day than I than I got home so uh, but this is actually my first day where I get to like spend pretty much the whole day just me and, me and Theo some good father-son time he's sleeping it all away <laughs> oh well better that he gets the sleep he needs right he's a growing baby he's almost six months old Half a year, crazy, right? No. The 22nd, he'll be uh, uh, of September. So we're in September right now. The 22nd of September, he'll be six months old. Man, time flies, time flies. We need to get into a bigger house. Because uh, soon, well, we've already started, but uh, we're trying for a second one, another one. Uh, but pretty soon, we have another embryo from IVF that is waiting in the freezer. Uh, for us to uh, ha have another attempt at IVF and Britt is uh, wanting to go through the whole process again yet through the egg retrieval and see if we can get some more yet um, but very soon very soon we'll be hoping to have a second one on the way nothing to announce yet it's a little early but hopefully soon so we gotta really think about getting into something different uh, soon, right? We could stay in this house for a little while yet. There's no real big rush, but gotta keep our antenna up, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Remember to be safe out there. Stay safe and drive safe on the roads. We'll see you later.